Uh, let's uh, move now to our guest, Representative Betty Grandy, uh, talking about this issue with uh, NDSU at Planned Parenthood. Representative Grandy, welcome to the program. Well, thank you for having me. First of all, what sort of uh, background can you uh, give us on this issue? What's I mean, what's well, give us, how, how, how did this come to be? <laughs> well, that, that is a really good question. I think that's the million dollar question or the million point two dollar question. It, it, it's very interesting that this comes up and, and at the time that it comes up, especially if uh, if the newspaper was accurate and this was decided back in September. Why is it we're finding out about it in January as we're heading into the legislative session? But what's interesting is I look at this and we go back four years and Obama four years ago pulled abstinent education program programming all the funding out. And that was the programming we were using in North Dakota as a part of the curriculum. If a school district, by the vote of the school board, chose to have any kind of sexual education courses, they were usually utilizing that program, of which then a lot of that curriculum came from um, what was called sound choice programming that we had over 50 of the schools utilizing if they were choosing to do this. Well, two years ago, this came in front of us through the Obamacare stuff that, that they were offering the sex education money. North Dakota turned it down because that's not what we wanted done here. Well, all of a sudden, NDSU decides they're going to start a sex education program. Well, my question is, I thought they were the university, and why are they interfering with anything to do with the high schools and programming for something that isn't supposed to be there? You know, it, it, it's all quite strange. And above and beyond that, when I see something that says that this is Planned Parenthood involved, they're not even a part of the state of North Dakota. They don't serve anyone in the state of North Dakota, and they shouldn't be a part of North Dakota. That's not a part of how we do business in this state. It's always been clear that way. It is an overt abortion industry that we don't want to be a part of. We have a we got an off air call about this uh, about the, this question of NDSU uh, taking uh, money fr- uh, from the federal government to, to partner with Planned Parenthood for sex education. And by the way, if you want to join the program, eight five five two zero zero seventeen seventy six. Let's play that off air call right now. Uh, I'd like to make a comment about the professors backing the Planned Parenthood policies. I think maybe we, the state should look at hiring the professors. Right from the state capitol, don't let the school administrators hire these people. Let the taxpayers bring in the people that we want. Second, maybe for Boehner would be all right candidate to run for the Speaker of the House, but you can hire anybody across the country. You don't have to be a representative. Maybe they should bring in a maverick like Newt Gingrich or someone like that can just have independence and bring these people together or else get what the people want. That's probably what we want. Get the people what we want. That's all I got to say. Thanks. I, I, I'm not I'm not sure that, that we want to get to a position where, where the legislature is micromanaging higher ed from the Capitol. I mean, I think that would be impossible with a part-time legislature, but is there a case here to be made? Uh, I, I, maybe, maybe is this another example of, of higher ed just needing more oversight from the state's elected officials? Well, and, and I agree with that exactly. There needs to be some more oversight. Obviously, they're not paying attention to what the standards that are being set by the North Dakota legislature, who are the representatives of the people of North Dakota. This is a a state-funded organization, NDSU, that needs to understand what the citizens are wanting. This is something the citizens have been very clear that they did not want. And this isn't the first time that NDUS has turned around, and I, I said U.S. because I meant university systems, have turned around and just blatantly ignored or went against what the legislature has asked for in regards to these types of issues. And it has to be called out. And, and some of us are extremely frustrated over this, and and maybe this is why I am now going to sit on appropriations and will be on the subcommit, subcommittee for education. You know, maybe this is where we need to address the issue. 
855-200-1776. Some of these other issues, I mean, because I mean, last last session we, we you know we saw a deal, and then this had nothing to do with sex education, but we saw a deal where uh, the legislature asked the universities to cap tuition increases, uh, and NDSU blew that out of the water. Uh, the uh, tuition went up almost ten percent over the course of the biennium. Uh, is that another example of of the universities just kind of not listening to the legislators? Exactly, and and this is where we need to get a better communication between what is exactly expected from the legislative body who represents the people to what the university systems and how they are to behave and what they are supposed to do. And and it's very, very frustrating. You know, and one of the things you mentioned early on, this is a federal grant. What is the federal government doing being involved in North Dakota's curriculum to our high schools and junior high. The, the, what a disconnect. We don't need the federal government in our university systems in and then entering into our ed- educational systems to our children. That is supposed to be a local issue, and, and they have overstepped it. Have, have there been any conversations yet with President Bershani at NDSU or uh, Chancellor uh, Shervani uh, at the at the NDUS office about this or how this came to be? I have not spoken with Shervani yet. We do have some information that came from the NDSU on this, and it really came back quite generic, just explaining to us their program, what the curriculum looked like, and a couple things like that. We need to get Representative um, Gandy. We got to we got to go to a break. Can, can you hold over to talk a little bit more about the upcoming session in the next segment? Sure. I'm Rob Port, sitting in for the chairman Scott Hennon, Representative Betty Grandy on the air with me. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Rob Port, sitting in for the chairman, Scott Hennon, 855-200-1776, if you've got any comments or questions. We're talking about North Dakota State University and uh, their partnership with Planned Parenthood. And, and Representative Granny, I, I, I'm sorry to have cut you off going into the break. You were uh, explaining uh, that, that you hadn't heard anything from uh, Chancellor Shervani about this issue yet, uh, but you had gotten some information from North Dakota State University about the program. It was very generic, however. All we did was received um, what the project summary looked like, how the grant money was going to be laid out, um, and, and specifically they did that because it was asked of them if there was any commingling of dollars, were there going to be state dollars used and things like that. And then they did send out um, a uh, prep makeup of what the program was going to look like uh, logistically, a, a model of it. And, you know, if we want, there's a 125-page booklet that um, goes into the full grant. Um, I have not gone to the university to pick that up yet. But what's interesting is, you know, kind of the whole thing, it comes down to just one thing with me, and that is that just because the federal government, who is broke, did I say they're broke, 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 is waving money in front of the university, does that mean it's the right thing to do to take this money when it does not apply to and what the what the state wants. And what, what are the strings that are attached? That's what I want to get to. What are the strings attached? Why would Planned Parenthood have any interest, or why do these professors from NDSU have any interest in bringing Planned Parenthood's programming into North Dakota? Why is this when we have a broke federal government giving us so-called free money? We've got to get rid of this mindset that they have money to give to us and that that's what it's going to be. I know that's hard for people to understand, but you know what? If they don't have any more of our tax dollars and they can keep asking for more of our tax dollars to spend, but it's just not working. It's broke. So we have to stop these terms and just get back to what the issue is, what's the strings attached. 855-200-1776, 855-200-1776, email rob at sayanythingblog.com. You know, uh, Representative Granny, last, last legislative session, we did see some uh, legislation put down that would have changed the, the manner in which higher ed is governed in North Dakota, would have ended uh, the independence of the, the university system, would have uh, folded up both the university system and K-12 through into a, a Department of Education that would have been under the governor. Uh, that was rejected. Is is there any is there any talk of of legislation or of doing that again this session? 
You know, I think there will be some discussion to it. I haven't seen any legislation to that effect. And I think the reason, the only reason why that got rejected kind of as quickly as it did is it just came in too late for a full and formal discussion. And and we really need to um, be able to look at how does that mechanism work and, and how do we do it. You know, really one of the key points to that particular piece of legislation was the fact that we have a complete disconnect between our um, secondary education, you know, the K-12 portion, the high school students do not know what is necessary and are not being taught to be able to enter into the university system. There's a disconnect. The university is not allowing these uh, high schools to know what is going to be required of them. And we are spending way too much time, money, effort on remedial work to our high school students in trying to get them into these into the university system. The other side of that is is trying to gear all children in towards the same direction. And this I, I, I I go off on my own little tangent here, but not every child should be geared towards and educated only towards a four-year degree. We need technical college work done. We need to be, and, and to utilize into those systems. We are in need so greatly of welders and plumbers and electricians and, and all of those wonderful professions. Instead of gearing towards this, all everybody go into the four-year degree, work towards your master's, head to a doctorate mentality. I, I think I think you're right, and and I think that's I think that I think what you're speaking to is maybe a lot of national a- attitudes. I mean, I don't think that what you're speaking to is a problem that's unique to North Dakota. I, I think that we've no. we've taken this this pipeline view where we're we should be pumping the kids straight from K through 12 into higher ed, and and college is just the thing you do after um, you know after K through 12, like it's just another four years or six years or what have you of of public education. I think that's I think that's just the wrong look, and I think we're doing our country a real disservice with that. Uh, but uh, you know, I, how, how do I mean whether we're talking about the Planned Parenthood issue, or whether we're talking about some of the other issues in higher ed, you know, some of the controversies with you know lack of oversight at Dickinson and State leading to that that debacle. Um, I mean, how does the legislature, how do the elected officials of the state uh, come to grips with, with some of what's going on? Well, you know, and, and part of that is really going to come to being able to answer the accountability questions. We have gotten to the point where when I started in as a freshman, um, it was implemented in this, this wonderful little round table that we have been stuck with. And ever since then, even the budget items come down to a couple of lines. And it's just, it, it's not conducive to the citizens understanding, knowing, and the legislators themselves being able to really know how to direct the university systems in, in, in what we as a state want to see done. And so we don't even have that oversight that's necessary. And whether or not you throw the baby out with the bathwater, there have been some good things that have come from this roundtable type setting. But what it has done is there was so much frustration. Oh, you're micromanaging the university system. And and maybe maybe in some cases we were looking at too many of pieces of the minutia. And that's not what we want to get back to. But we truly need to start understanding what is happening in the universities. And when something big like a Dickinson State issue comes up, we have to be able to get to the bottom of it, clean it up, and then move on. When you don't address the issue, then it stays in the question. The question stays in the mind of the people. So I, let's I, get it to the forefront and answer it. I, and I, I think I think you start to breed some resentment. I mean, is is there? I, and I don't know what you're hearing, but I still hear a lot of dissatisfaction that we had what happened at Dickinson State University, massive tuition or uh, degree fraud, uh, diploma mill was the term that was used, and and nobody nobody has has been prosecuted i mean this seems to be fraud on a grand scale and it seems the worst thing that happened is is a couple of people lost their jobs and that was it i i think i think the public looks at something like that and they just think you know the higher ed system is just not accountable i mean is that what, what legislators are hearing as well you know and that is that is a part of what is still lingering out there and and when we don't see those questions being addressed and and answered then they they breed that 
issue of, of trust. You know, can we trust you? And, and that's not the relationship we need. We need a relationship where there's, it's a give and take, it's a back and forth of understanding your needs, what we can provide, how can we help, how can we stay out of the way? If we don't have those open communications, if we don't know what's going on, how are we supposed to work together? I think that's right. Representative Grandy, thank you so much for your time. Oh, thank you very much. Have a blessed day. I'm Rob Port sitting in for the chairman, Scott Hennon, 855-200-1776. Coming up, next segment, going to talk with Charlene Nelson about the Converge on the Capitol event coming up later this month at the North Dakota Legislature, 855-200-1776. Don't go away.